Hey guys, Dropper there, and today I'm going to show you how you can install macOS Sequoia on a 2012 Mac Mini. Now the Mac Mini that I'm using is a Mac Mini 6.1. If I try to install macOS Sequoia on it at the minute, it will not let me, as it is too old to be supported. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use a program called OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So OpenCore is an underlying bootloader that will act as an intermediary between your Mac's hardware and the OS. So it will make the OS think it is running on a supported device and will apply patches to get your older devices to work on it. Now obviously this is unofficial, it is not supported by Apple, but hopefully this should work for you. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use OpenCore Legacy Patcher and a USB drive. Now the USB drive that you have wants to be blank, you don't want anything on it, as we're going to need to create an installation USB with it. So once you've made sure you have a USB that you can use, you first want to come to the OpenCore Legacy Patcher page on GitHub. So if on the GitHub page, we come to the releases section and currently the latest release is 2.1.2. So if we then just scroll down to the download section and we download the OpenCarPatcher GUI app.zip. And there we go. Now that's finished downloading. We will just open it up. And then we will say yes to opening it. And now the application has launched. We're now going to click on the create macOS installer option here. And then we will say download macOS installer. And then we will select macOS Sequoia and we will click download. And we will now just let it download that. Right, so now it's finished downloading and extracting. We will say yes to creating a macOS installer. And then we will select install macOS Sequoia 15.1. And then you want to select your USB. So for me, that is disk two. And now it's just making sure that we understand that once you click yes, it will erase all data on the USB. So again, if you have any data on it that you want, copy it off somewhere else, it will get wiped. So I'll now click yes and it will now start creating the installer. Right, so now it's successfully created the macOS installer. We will also now select yes to installing OpenCore to the disk so that it then isn't relying on the USB being plugged in later on. So if we click yes, and now it's finished building the configuration, if we click install to disk, and then you want to select the drive that is your operating system one. So for me, that is my disk zero here. And then we will click on it again. And now it's done that, we now need to reboot. Now you want to pay attention to what it says here. So when we reboot, we need to hold down the option key for me so that we can then select the open car option in the EFI options. So if we now click reboot and we hold down the option key. So we'll now select the EFI boot option. And then inside of it, we will then select install macOS Sequoia. And now it's booted into the macOS Sequoia installer. If we now click install macOS Sequoia and then we continue, then we continue. And then we'll have to accept the terms and conditions and agree again. And then you want to select where you want macOS Sakai to install. So for me, that is on my Macintosh SSD here. So not the installation USB. So if we select that and then click continue, it will now start installing to the main drive. So once you get to the point during the installation where it's asking you to either boot from your hard drive or back to the USB, you now want to unplug your USB and then select your hard drive and then let it carry on with the installation process. Right, and now it's gone through its multiple restarts. We're now at the login page, so I'll just log into my account. And there we go, now it's finally logged in. We can now go through the setup process. And now if we continue, we should now get into the operating system. And there you go, now as you can see, we're on macOS Sequoia on our 2012 Mac Mini. Now I will just restart the Mac just to make sure that it does boot up correctly now we've signed in, so I'll just quickly do that. And there we go, as you can see, the machine has successfully restarted and I've logged back in. Now, as we allowed OpenCore to install the files to the system drive when we were first creating the installation USB, we no longer need the USB in and you should not have it in now, as it may try to keep booting to that if you leave it plugged in. Now, it is possible that in the future, if updates come along, it may stop working, so you may want to be wary of updating too soon. However, it should hopefully get updated over time. So, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget the like button. If you decide to hit the dislike button, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you another time. Bye.